Hi there, you found us here at Storytime with Miss Becky. I'm Miss Becky and this is our friend Bear who loves to read along with you. Bear has a question for you. How would you feel if your family moved away from your country home to live in a big city? Would you like the change? Some say yes, some not sure, Bear. Well, Chester the dog's family just moved to the city and now Chester feels sad because he lost his favorite job, herding sheep. Let's put on the magic reading glasses and see if Chester can find a city job he likes. Chester, the out of work dog by Marilyn Singer. There were two things Chester loved most in the world, his family and his sheep. Chester's family was named Whippenhooper. There was Ma Whippenhooper, Pa Whippenhooper, and their children, Claude, Maud, and Willie. The Whippenhoopers all looked different. The sheep all looked pretty much the same, but Chester could recognize each and every one. He had to. It was his job. Every morning after breakfast, Chester would herd his sheep out of their pen to a pasture. Every evening, he'd bring them back. He ran ahead of the sheep and showed them where to go. He steered them left. He steered them right. He charged and chased to keep them all in line. He made sure not one of them got lost or hurt along the way. He was very good at his work. At night when his work was done, Chester would settle down happily with the whippin' hoopers, first to listen to a little television and later to the quieter country sounds of the wind in the apple trees, the crickets in the grass, and the distant bleat of his sleepy sheep. Then, curled up on Willie's bed, Chester too would fall asleep and dream nothing but pleasant dreams. But one day, the Whippin' Hoopers sold the farm. They packed their belongings into a big truck and moved to town. Chester went with them. His sheep stayed behind. That night after TV in their new apartment, Chester tried hard to hear the wind and the crickets and most of all his sheep. But what he heard instead was the screech of sirens the blast of car horns, and the sound of two cats fighting in an alley. And when he fell asleep at last, curled up on Willie's bed, his dreams were not pleasant at all. In the morning, Chester woke up early, ready as ever to go to work. Then he remembered he didn't have any work to do. Neither did the Whippin' Hoopers. They all decided to take Chester for a walk. They strolled by shops and houses. They ambled past a precinct and a playground, and then a public school. Look, Chester, said Maud. This school has your name. Chester A. Arthur Elementary School. Claude and I will be going there. Isn't that great? Chester did not think it was great. His paws hurt too much from the concrete. His ears hurt from the noise. And he missed his sheep more than before. A whole week went by. Pa Whippenhooper started a new job. Ma Whippenhooper fixed up the new apartment. Willie played with his old toys. Claude and Maude went to their new school. Only Chester had nothing to do. 
Oh, he walked Claude and Maude to Chester A. Arthur Elementary School every day, but it wasn't enough. He was restless. He was bored. He needed to work. He needed to herd. So he decided if he couldn't herd his sheep, he'd just have to herd something else. On Monday, he herded a squirrel into a mailbox. On Tuesday, he herded a pair of pigeons into the post office. On Wednesday, he drove three men and a refrigerator into a bowling alley. Oh dear, said Ma Whippenhooper, who had to apologize. On Thursday, he chased four garbage collectors with four large sacks of garbage into the fanciest restaurant in town. Oh, Chester, yelled Maud and Claude, dragging him out of the place. On Friday, he forced five firemen into a fountain. On Saturday, he sent six large policemen onto a statue of George Washington's horse. But on Sunday in the park, when he herded an entire girls softball team into the boys' bathroom, Pa Whippenhooper shouted, that's it, that's enough. He snapped on Chester's leash and scolded him all the way back to the apartment. What are we going to do with him? Ma Whippenhooper sighed over dinner that night. She looked at Chester and shook her head. Claude and Maude looked at him too and frowned. Even Willie wouldn't give him a pat. Chester lowered his head. His ears and tail drooped. He slunk under the kitchen table and stayed there all night. He did not go to sleep on Willie's bed. He did not go to sleep at all. It was clear to him his family didn't need him anymore. But perhaps his sheep still did. So just as the sun was coming up before the whippin' hoopers rose, he quietly climbed out the window and set out for his old home. He trotted purposefully past the shops and the houses, the precinct, the playground, and Chester A. Arthur Elementary School. A man tried to pet him. Another tossed him a stick. An old woman offered him a biscuit. A newspaper girl tried to take him home. But he kept on going and going. For miles he walked until he reached a field near the edge of town. Suddenly he stopped and stared and stared some more. Sheep! What Chester was staring at were sheep. Ten of them in all, with curly coats and twitching tails. But they didn't look quite like his sheep. For one thing, they were all standing on their hind legs. He moved in closer and sniffed the air. They didn't smell like his sheep either. And when he moved closer still and heard their voices, he knew they weren't sheep at all. They were kids. What are we going to do? One of them cried. We've been lost for a whole hour and now the bus won't start. We'll never get there. We'll be the only school in the county that won't be performing at the festival. Yeah, and our play Wooly Bully is so good too, said another. We'll have to walk, suggested a third. But we don't know the way, said the first. Doesn't anybody know how to find Chester A. Arthur Elementary School? Chester's ears 
pricked up. His tail began to wag. He reached the children in two big bounds. I do, he shouted, though what they heard was woof. And then he began to herd them on their way. He ran ahead of the kids and showed them where to go. He steered them left. He steered them right. Through the field and back to town, he charged and he chased to keep them all in line. He made sure not one of them got lost or hurt along the way. And soon he brought them giggling and cheering straight up the steps of the school. The principal was waiting at the door. When the children told her what Chester had done, she invited him to come in and see their play. Chester was delighted. He sat in the auditorium between Claude and Maud, who were overjoyed that he had returned and watched the play. And though he didn't understand it at all, he still had a good time. The other Whip and Hoopers were very proud when they learned what he had done. So was Chester. The next day, he was prouder still when he started his brand new job, a school crossing guard. He knew without a doubt he'd be very good at his work. Bear's wondering, do you think herding sheep helped Chester learn how to herd kids too? Lots of yeses, Bear. Will Chester work just as hard to make sure kids don't get lost or hurt? Most say yes, Bear. Well, Bear wants to know which you think Chester will like better, his old job or his new job? Hmm. Bear's also hoping you come back soon for more adventures in finding the right job. Bye for now. Please subscribe.